welcome to Bonita's Kitchen and thank you for joining us. What I'm going to be making today is a delicious batch of apple butter. Now this apple butter recipe is an old-fashioned recipe and it's a viewer's request. Now apple butter is not a traditional Newfoundland and Labrador recipe but it's a recipe that we enjoyed over the years. So what we're going to do today is turn our freshly picked apples into apple butter. So let's get started. So earlier today, me and Raymond went out and picked some beautiful apples off our cousin Sarah's tree. We picked at least a basket full. Today I don't need to use all of those. I'm only going to use about six to seven pounds. And if you've got store-bought apples, about two bags, you know, would cover that. So what I'm going to do now is cut these in half and in quarters and start boiling them. So before you start cutting them, you need to wash them good. And you can let them dry, air dry, or you don't have to, but if you're pick picking them in advance, but just wash them good, then cut them into halves or quarters, because these are small and medium. And if there's any brown on them, just cut that off, because we're going to be boiling the stones, we're going to be boiling the stems, we're going to be boiling the, the peel of them. So everything is going to be boiled together. I'll talk a little bit about that. You also need to have a boiler that got a nice thick bottom to it because you want it to hold the heat. You go, the reasons for leaving the stones in and the peels and that on, we want all of that extra pectin in there to help us with this apple butter. So now I'll tell you what's next. We're going to be putting in two cups, two and a half cups of water and it could be cold or warm it doesn't matter into the boiler we're going to be putting one and a quarter cup of apple cider vinegar you're just going to pour it right over the top like that we're going to be putting in a half a teaspoonful of sea salt pour all that in there together now i'll let you know what's next so what we're going to do now is put a lid on the top of our boiler and we're going to put it on the stove top on a medium heat until the apples are boiled and broke down. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. You may have to stir, stir it a little bit in between just to keep it moving, but you'll see it galloping and breaking those apples down. So I'll show you what that looks like. So I got one done here in advance and I'm going to show you what that looks like. After it's boiled for about, when it starts to boil, you'll only need about 5, 10, 15 minutes on this. It breaks away really quick. You see all of the apples is like a stew. What we're going to do now is scoop this over into our strainer. We're going to be uh, straining off all of the juice all of the flesh, flesh meaning this nice, is almost like applesauce, and the skin, the, the stems, and the seeds is gonna be behind, left behind. So now this is the part where it gets a little, little more trickier and a little bit more work, because like you said, you're separating now, you're separating the, the skin and the stems and that from the flesh part of the apples and what we're going to be doing is squirting all of that through a strainer and another way you can do it is use a potato ricer and you can squirt it through there so I'll show you both ways and you use what's good for you now I recognize that everybody got one of those potato ricers because I believe this one was owned by your mom, mm -hmm. Raymond. Yeah. And it's probably a good 60 years old or more. So pretty much you're going to do the same as that there. You're going to scoop the apple filling that was all boiled down into the ricer and you're just going to use the, the handle to squirt it down like this into the bowl. 
So after you've released all of what you can of the apple flesh, you see this is the remnants that's left behind. We don't want that, so we're going to toss that over into a different bowl because we're going to discard that. We can use that in our compost. Just leave that there. So I'm going to continue on pretty much doing the same thing to sieve all of that apple sauce through. Now I find this ricer works perfect for me because it all comes out but I make an awful mess with it. I got it up over my camera, Raymond, myself. But just keep going like this and just till you get all of your apple sauce just squeezed through a ricer, a sieve or a strainer and leaving all of the stems, seeds and skin behind. That's it. So this is a little bit of a messy job, but it's worked. If you're you're in apple season now, or any time of the year, because I mean you can buy apples in the store. You don't necessarily have to pick them from your tree or your neighbor's tree or bulk bar, because sometimes you can get it in a bulk bin, you know. So just take all of that sauce, and get every little taste. Put this over there and you see it's just nice and smooth. I'm going to put it all now over into this boiler, clean up a little bit around because I've squirted more applesauce everywhere. So I hope you're following along and you're excited to make this apple butter. So take all of that nice sauce and just put into your boiler or saucepan again whichever you're using and this is how much we got so that's pretty good there and we you know you might get a few stones still in there but you can pick them out as you go or a little bit of the skin that's okay all right so now let's put the rest of the ingredients in so you can put anywhere from two to two and a half cups of sugar in this. You can start with two, then work your way to two and a half. That's entirely up to you and taste in between. We got two uh, teaspoonfuls of cinnamon. We got a half a teaspoonful of allspice, half a teaspoonful of cloves. We got half a teaspoonful of ginger. And we got two tablespoonfuls of lemon juice. So now we're going to stir that on together. So now we're going to stir all of this in with our sauce. So now at this point, we're going to put it back on the heat, on a medium heat. You're going to stir occasionally just to make sure it don't burn or stick to the bottom. The cover still can go on, but have it sort of on this a little bit off, a little bit uh, cracked, we call it. And let this condense down. It's going to turn a darker color, and it can go anywhere from one to two hours, depending on how much sauce you're making, or how much apple butter, but right now it's a sauce. So let's put this on the damper. Put it on my damper. I'm using my back damper as well because we we did two. We started out with one boiling in advance, then we got the one that I showed you on there now, and I'll show you the stage that that's at uh, right now. But what I want to do once I put this on to start boiling, I want to take a little taste of the sauce because this sauce right now got all these beautiful flavors with the spices and the sugar. You might want to add some more spice. You want to, might want to add some more sugar. That's entirely up to you. Right now it's absolutely delicious for me. Of course I can do that food dance, but it's not complete, but it's still nice. And now I'm gonna let that boil there and put another lid on it. And I'm gonna show you what the other one looks like. So what our apple sauce now is over there cooking down so as we can make that apple butter this is what that stage would look like when you cut your apples into quarters and halves and getting it boiling so it pretty much boil like that when it's on a bubble anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes and you'll see it all just breaking down to just little bits of mush like this so now we go back to the stage where all of our ingredients is in and it's cooking down to be an apple butter. So now into our other 
boiler. See how it's starting to boil there? Just keep every so often giving that a nice little stir. And as it cooks, it'll condense. And then I'll show you what it looks like when it's starting to go a little more darker. Okay, so I'm gonna gradually take my lid off here. You can see this apple butter just boiling there. And just look at nice and dark it is. And the longer it boils like this, the sweeter those apples are because you know you, you boil in those sweetness as it goes. The smell here is amazing. So now we're at the halfway point. So we'll keep it going. You need at least two hours on your, your apple butter. And then I'll show you how you can check it to see if it's ready to bottle. But while you're waiting, get your bottle sterilized. I don't want to lift my lid all the ways because this is galloping and is like lava and you don't want to burn yourself so my cover is just part ways and that's letting out the steam and getting that uh, condensed so as you can see here this is the the sauce the apple sauce that came off the one that I showed you earlier and that it's very light and I'm going to show you the difference in the in the color of this now that it's just about done. I'm going to show you how to test to see if it's ready. And not very much pulp came from this. So we'll just compost that. So I'll just show you what they both look like. Okay, I'm going to slowly take my lid off again because I don't want to burn no one. So as you can see, this is what it looks like here boiling and the difference in the color over here what we started with it's absolutely delicious and the sweetness in this now is perfect and what you would do you put a bowl a little bowl in your freezer and just put a tiny little bit of that sauce on the bowl and then pretty much after it starts to cool then you can see like if it's running either way if it stays in place it's going to set really nice so this is ready for us to bottle here now and uh, have your bottle sterilized and i'll show you what that's like so of course as you see here i've got my bottles sterilized and ready to go so this goes like any other uh, jams pickles relishes that you would make you got to have your bottles ready and then your sauce has got to be hot your bottles got to be hot or at least warm so that it would seal properly of course if you're only using it for short term you can let it seal on its own with that hot liquid after you've uh, after you've bottled it but if you're going to store it for long-term storage of course you got to put it back into your your uh, dipper or your boiler and sterilize it again and we do have that link on Bonita's kitchen showing you how to do that and it should be up at the top left hand corner or I'll share it at the bottom so what I'm going to do now is get my bottles out and we're going to start putting the liquid into our bottles so this is my fun part and you know when you're preparing your bottles think about given it as gifts so you can go 50 ml bottles you go to 50 ml bottles you can go 500 ml bottles i like the two i like the 50 ml ones these small ones there because i can give them as gifts and they're just perfect the 250 one is perfect for us because when we open it we won't have it very long before we need to open another one so just bottle it like that so when you're filling the bottles, leave about a half an inch to an inch way up the bottle so that it would seal properly. And if you're not using one of these scoops, make sure that the, the top of the bottle is clean before you put the stopper on and the lid. And then, like I said, seal it up good like that. So pretty much that's all you need to do there and like you said keep doing that until they're they're all bottled do it while they're hot uh this is really hot on my ends just in case you're wondering if it's cold i think i got a little bit of a good tolerance to hot 
containers. <laughs> but anyway, um, just keep doing that. And then after, when I finish as mine here now, I'm going to show you what it looks like when it's sealed. And I'm going to show you a few things you could serve it with. You know, I always say it comes my fun part, but I think I enjoy all of it. And, but the part when it's done and you're ready to eat it is amazing. Now, from the cooked apples, I took off some of that sauce before it was done over into a butter because I like it that way too. Now, it's not for long-term storage, but I put it in my fridge and I use it with whatever I want. Uh, that I got cooked and certainly um, pork chops and right here today we've got pork chop cooked because we can use our butter our apple butter on it and I'm gonna open this one up here now this is one we got made here in advance we done some yesterday because like you said we've cooked a lot of apple sauce and we got some homemade bread crackers and cheese so this is a display I'm gonna show you this now so now I'm gonna pop this stopper Oh, nice. So right here is our apple butter that we made yesterday. So what I want to do, I want to put a little bit of the apple butter onto my pork chop because you can serve it that way. Did you mean my pork chop? <laughs> Your pork chop, of course, Raymond. I'm going to put a little bit on a cracker and most definitely some on this piece of homemade bread. Now this homemade bread is our white bread and you can get that on Bonita's Kitchen. I actually will share the link with you for that. And this is how you would serve it, as good as it gets. You can't get any better than this. I'm gonna have a little taste now. I'm gonna have a taste of this apple butter on a cracker. Now, I'm, I might have to fight Raymond for that pork chop because it smells <laughs> absolutely delicious. And I know with this apple butter is gonna even be better. Mm. Of course, crunch of my cracker. I could have got a, I could have got a soggy cracker, but I got a crunchy one. It's got a delicious blend of spices the taste of that apple there and and like i said it can go with even dessert if you want to put it over ice cream so delicious two thumbs up food dance by bonita's kitchen little taste of my water so if you're interested in making this delicious apple butter i'm going to share the recipe with you it's going to be down under this link as well the subscribe button is there if you haven't already done so please hit the subscribe button and you'll see more recipes that Bonita's Kitchen has posted over this past six years as well you can visit us on our webpage www.bonitaskitchen.com you can also visit us on, on our Facebook page um, on YouTube right here I'll share those links up at the top left hand corner or there at the bottom. So again, thank you for joining us for Bonita's Kitchen. From our kitchen to yours. Join us by the sea. A journey